Thanks to our sponsor, Dundeal.ie, we bring you Business Bites, the best bits of that great business show served up in individual servings. Dundeal Motors is home to Ireland's largest range of new and premium used cars. That's why you'll find cars from Audi and BMW dealerships on Dundeal. Are you looking for a seven-seater to accommodate your growing family? Maybe you're after a luxury saloon to make a statement. We have the car for you. You'll also find Ireland's largest range of electric cars to help you make the switch. Visit dundeal.ie today to start the search for your next car. From episode 133, Brian Nation and Patrick O'Shaughnessy told us about a new Irish-American whiskey that they have created. We featured quite a few drinks companies on that great business show. And of course, we had the big daddy of them all, John Teeling, on with us on episode 21. Hard to believe that was a full two years ago. On this episode, 133... I'm delighted to be joined by Brian Nation, one-time master distiller with Irish Distillers. And from Minnesota, USA, we have Patrick O'Shaughnessy, whose great, great granddaddy hailed from Gort in County Galway, and who has gone to doing big things in Minneapolis, like setting up his own distillery and enticing Brian Nation to join him in Minnesota, where they are now producing a new type of Irish-American whiskey. Patrick, Brian, welcome to That Great Business Show. It's great to be here. Thanks a million for having us. And that is the voice of Brian Nation from Cork. (laughs) As if anybody could mistake it. As if you couldn't, yeah, exactly. As if you'd never guess. Your opener for 10 is E. Your whiskey has an E in it. You're making it kind of in Minnesota because you're also putting Irish whiskey into it. I'm confused. Does it have an E? Does it not have an E? Or what in the name of E are you doing? (laughs) Well, I can guarantee you all of our whiskies have an E in it. And it's E for excellence as well. So we... we, we... (laughs) It's going to be one of those interviews. It's going to be one of those interviews. (laughs) Patrick, you're very, very welcome to Ireland, obviously. Thank you. And one of the things that I've learned about you, forget about your whiskey. Your great-granddad? No, your grand... Who who bought Kerry... It's like Killarney National Park. My great-grandfather, I.A. Ignatius Aloysius O'Shaughnessy, bought, I think, five to 6,000 acres of Killarney National Park. Uh, didn't want to see it developed and wanted it to be a treasure of Ireland like it is today as a national park. So kind of an interesting history. And he got to become an honorary citizen, stuff that we're proud of as Irish Americans. Well, it's on him because it is not just beautiful. It is fabulous. I mean, it's just incredible. Stunning. Down there. Oh, well, what a lovely legacy to have. And now you are trying to re-embed yourself into the uh, Irish psyche, which I, I leave it open to the pair of you. Is this a marketing operation to get a bit of American, sorry, a bit of Irish into America? Or is it a bit of, well, what is the dynamic? What are you trying to sell? It's a whiskey, obviously. And obviously, Brian, you've got a lot of creds in the whiskey area. You didn't become uh, the numero uno in Irish distillers by uh, not knowing your stuff. Yeah, I, I suppose when, when you talk about uh, Keeper's Heart to Irish uh, and American whiskey, what we're really trying to showcase is the best of both Irish and American distilling traditions and showing that the two styles of whiskey can actually be blended in a way where you get this extra dimension of flavour and taste that you wouldn't get in 100% Irish whiskey or 100% American whiskey. So for us, it's not so much a marketing gimmick, it's actually showing showcasing that there is a fantastic taste profile that can be developed by bringing these two whiskey styles together. But at the end of the day, there are many, many, many whiskey brands and they're developing all the time. And you do have to have your something special, your standout. And is that it, that you are bringing the two traditions together? Is that your standout? Absolutely, in in, in terms of the flavour that the actual combination and the blending actually brings really does showcase the standout moments when you taste that whiskey. And I think it's one of the beauties that we've seen when we launch in America and when we launch in Ireland is that as people get the chance to taste the whiskey, they do appreciate that impact of flavour and that extra dimension of flavour. That, of course, is what you're going to say, but you know as well, you're based in the States. You know what they put into your beautiful whiskey that you've just spent years blending and all the rest. When a Coca-Cola hits your whiskey, does it matter 
anything? <laughs> oh, what a face <laughs> like. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Um, actually, one of the things that when we were putting these whiskies together, actually, was we wanted to talk about having these whiskies as being versatile, right? And at the end of the day, the way a person drinks their whiskey and enjoys their whiskey is they, the way they want to do it. I don't think we should prescribe to anybody the way they should drink their whiskies. I mean, from a versatility point of view, what I can tell you is that the whiskies that we have, the Keepers Art Irish Plus American and the Irish Plus Bourbon, they're actually great neat on the rocks, but they're also fantastic in cocktails. And if you want to mix a, a, it with Coke, it tastes great too. Patrick. Tell me, how did you manage to get this lad? I know the backstory is that, did you get him on LinkedIn, first of all? I did. I, I wrote him on LinkedIn, taking a shot in the dark, never thinking he'd actually write me back. We are huge proponents of LinkedIn for business, and you are now living proof that you got... <laughs> <laughs> but, but you did. I mean, to be fair, Brian Nation... You are really well regarded in the industry and you have decamped to Minnesota. And you, I read about you, you said it's very cold over there. Oh, that's an understatement. <laughs> but you managed to get him, Patrick. Well, the first thing I did was I looked at the rain pattern in Cork and I knew <laughs> that if I could get him out of the rain, that was going to be a step in the right direction. No, you know, I, in all seriousness, I think it just, it came down to people. Um, I reached out to LinkedIn. Brian kindly wrote me back. We had a nice chat. Uh, I told them maybe, hey, Brian, I'll call you for a drink in three months when I'm in Ireland. And then uh, the call had gone on for like an hour and a half. It had gone so well. I immediately jumped off the phone, called my family. It was like, we need to be in Ireland in two days. And then I think I shocked Brian by saying, hey, we'll be there in two days to see you. Would you bring out your wife? Because I knew who was really going to make the decision. <laughs> I hope Brian's heart was in it. And I think it was. But I also know my wife makes all the big decisions in our family. So we went out that night. Uh, it became a five-hour dinner. We never talked talked whiskey at all. And it was just kind of, you know, the story of our of growing up, our kids, our parents, what, what do we care about? And it just was kind of a magic evening where you've never found somebody like there on the spot that you felt like, you know, long lost friends just immediately. And, you know, where there was no business plan, it really came down to like people liking each other. Taking the master distiller from Jemison, from Mills, Middleton and all, you had to write a big check. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's, Brian's priceless, so I don't know. <laughs> That's my very point. In, in footballing terms, like you're um, Lionel Messi, you're a Ronaldo. Uh, so I'm trying to get him over. To get out the door here in a <laughs> but you know what I'm uh, saying. Yeah, yeah. I know what's going to happen after I leave this room. He's going to be like, that check yeah, needs that to actually be yeah, 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 yeah. You just put me in the zero. Ronaldo class. <laughs> So what is your interest, Patrick, in having a whiskey brand? Because your real business is venture capital. Yeah, I, I mean, my real interest really, it came, it came down to uh, a few things, I think. One, uh, this was something that our family could share. We're a tight-knit family, but we're a big family. But you could have, you could have bought a national park. You could have bought something <sighs> else. Why a whiskey? But, the, the, you know, when you see the bottle in people's hands in a glass, it's just there's a joy. And when we researched whiskey, uh, we, we loved kind of the iconic history of Irish whiskey. We liked the tie to our heritage. We quickly realized as we were learning about it that there was just a passion and a joy and a camaraderie in the whiskey community. And then, of course, like we've had so many good times as a family with a glass, you know, kind of swirling in our hands and to see joy and, and, and uh, happiness. I think it really comes to life through whiskey. And so that, that just got, gave us the, the spark to want to do it. And you have brought with you your cousin, isn't that right? Yeah, I've been working with my cousin, Michael O'Shaughnessy, for over 20 plus years. And uh, I guess we cooked this up together and, uh, and um, you know, been off to the races with great partners like Brian. And but before you got to Brian, mm -hmm. are you sitting, like, Minnesota is not famous for being particularly Irish. I mean, wow. maybe I'm wrong. Ooh, St. Paul, 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 Minnesota would be, would be very is it, is big. Is that a big, 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 Irish, big community. Irish community? Okay. Um, I Archbishop correct. John Ireland was, was making, in St. Paul, was really going out of his way to bring folks over from Ireland into St. Paul. I think we might have one of the largest St. Patrick's Day. We just had a St. Patrick's Day parade. I think there were like over 30,000 people. Ooh, and it's okay. all the Coldest Irish Patrick's community Day in 30 years. 
Uh, okay, but well, it wasn't I raining that correct, day, so I... Not for the first time, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you but, but, but you're... Back to you and your cousin. I go back to the idea that you could have chosen anything. You could have chosen a brewery. There's a brewery actually next door to your distillery, isn't there? Yes. Sure. Sur- Surly, Brewing. Surly Brewing. Surly Brewing. Surly Brewing. Do you see? I've done my little bit of homework. <laughs> 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 uh, that doesn't belong to you, does it? No, no definitely no. not. But you could have gone for a for a, a brewery or you could have gone for anything else. Whiskey. I, like I said, it, it was just kind of uh, uh, a labor of love. We just, we started researching it. And, um, you know, as we learned the history and kind of the stories and the passion, the, you know, it's nuts and bolts businesses are, aren't very exciting, but whiskey kind of stirs the imagination. But you're buying some, the Irish part, you're buying it from John Teeling up in uh, Great Northern. And are you then shipping that over to Minnesota? Yeah, we're, we're as you how, said. How do you ship a ton load of uh, whiskey as well. Well, just... first, it's Irish, it's Irish whiskey that sits here in the country. So it's it's age, it's resting and aging in barrels. And when it's ready, uh, you can never ship a barrel across. Otherwise, it would no longer be Irish whiskey. Ah, these so are the it, little it, tricks that I love yeah, learning. So it, it comes out into uh, inert containers like IBCs, you know, kind of plastic totes, if you will. And then we ship them across uh, to our facility in Minnesota. Put that into English for me. What's a plastic tote and oh, an IBC? It's, it's basically a plastic container that stores a, a thousand liters of liquid. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes on to presumably onto a ship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're shipped over, ship it over, literally, onto mm-hmm. a presumably a choo-choo train. Yeah. And how many of these do you ship? I mean... Well, we're probably doing three or four shipments a year. And each time a shipment come, will come across, it's about 36 totes or 36 IBCs. So it's quite, a, it's quite an intense process. And then, because again, I've been doing my homework, the problem with success, and I assume that you will have success with this because you've got all the right things, you then have to ship more and ship more yeah. and ship more to a point where sometimes that you can run out of stock. And well, you know the worst thing in business oh, is to have demand and not being able to meet it. Exactly. So one of the one of the, the, the lucky things that we have is is a great relationship with Great Northern Distillery where we're actually laying down stocks to meet the demand. And a so little is everybody bit on else. top. <laughs> so exactly. So effectively we have we have laid down contracts where we have new mixed spirit being laid down every year for us to to meet the expected forecasted demand, but also on top of that, because you have to build, you have to build for the future. So we've done that with both Great Northern Distillery and also with, with MGP in in Indiana for the American whiskey. And I think that in itself, having those relationships and being able to build those relationships has actually given us the confidence to to feel that we have have sufficient stocks to supply our whiskey to meet the demands that we expect. And where would that demand be? Is that New York or do you go nationwide? Because there's another problem with a with big area. It's, a, ma- it's, it's yeah. a massive area. Look, I mean, we didn't even expect in year one to launch more than five states. But because Which states are you such, into? So we're actually in 18 states in our okay. first year. So we started in the Midwest where we obviously wanted to own our own area around Minnesota, Illinois, the Wisconsin. Dakotas, Wisconsin. But we also went to Wichita or Kansas. We went to where Colorado, is. which Colorado, is where our, where our family, family is. New also Jersey, New York, high to whiskey. you know, all of these locations. And it just kept on growing and growing. And we were kind of going, okay, maybe we need to just put the, the the foot on the brake a little bit because you want to make sure that when you're launching in markets that you're getting the exposure you want and that we're able to actually keep resourcing the the feet on the street to grow the brand because there's no point in going into a, a state just in a crew drive, do all of this big pizzazz around the brand and then walk out of it and hope that the distributor will just do it all for you. So we actually put the, the foot on the pedal, uh, on the brake a little bit and said to ourselves for 2023, we're going to remain in those 18 states because we also have direct to consumers, which brings us to almost 40 states anyway, and we'll grow these wider and then in 2024 move towards the 52 states again. And then you're also selling into Ireland yes. because you're launching. This is why you're this, here. Yeah, right? Tell yeah, the world right. that you're here. Yeah. And you have chosen, from what I could see, you're not with the big multiples here yet, are you? No, you're, well, we're, we're with, yeah, we're 
we're with, we, we've come Independence. in through Barry and Fitzwilliam and, you know, ultimately we'd like to be in the super values and the, 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 the Dunn stores and Tesco's at some point. But, you know, you have you to start somewhere. This. Of course I have. No, no, no. How can I forget Dunn stores and super value? Huh? <laughs> my, my biggest problem. Oh, you in O'Brien's? Yes, yeah. You are in O'Brien's? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And basically, like, we, we, we've done launches um, all week now across Cork and stuff like that and we're up here in Dublin and then we're moving towards Galway and Killarney, uh, Killarney and then back to Cork You're already on Killarney. <laughs> <laughs> we see now when we go down there. <laughs> well, no, I think that's, your, you know, that's an, <laughs> an open, open goal for you there. So then you've done Ireland or you will have done Ireland. You'll have done the 18 states or whatever number. What about the world? Well, we've got a lot in front of us, just as we are in, in uh, the States. As you said, it's a big country, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to grow that out, kind of reach for national expansion in the next few years. Uh, this is really special for us to be here in Ireland. It really is a, a homecoming. It's where our journey together uh, started. It's where our, you know, mine and Brian's and the families, and it's where our heritage is. So Ireland is near and dear to our hearts. So we're going to kind of focus all of our love, passion, and energy into Ireland for the next year. I think, you know, we're a, a small, humble kind of, but underdog scrappy startup looking uh, with kind of an eye to a few, to the future. So at some point uh, you can for sure see us beyond Ireland, but it, it might be a year or two before we But kinda... world domination is something that you're probably Well, that's more in Brian's camp than mine. I, I just have, <laughs> I, I am that. humble. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> Brian has, well, I mean, obviously the Jemison story is incredible Fantastic, from a, yeah. a turnaround. But there is, seems to be a massive demand for whiskey these days, driven by fashion or what? Well, I, I think one of the things, uh, I'll, I'll let Brian speak to kind of what he thinks is driving it, but I think one of the things that drives us to the idea of national in America here in Ireland and then looking beyond to, to further countries is that, if, you know, in the whiskey space, it's hard to find kind of an open blank space and open canvas where nobody is, is competitively there. Then when, when you ask the question, like what excites you at a business level, one of the things I think we took stock of, and we believe it's there at a consumer level uh, with a high desire for is innovation, something that's truly new and different. Nobody had made an Irish American blend in over 90 years. Nobody in America, until new as the first to make an American single pot still, but we're kind of right there on their heels. That's a total new innovation. Brian's laying down the first world's triple distilled rye, first 100% triple distilled bourbon. I think on a global community of whiskey fans, getting something new and different kind of brings you to a national or an international audience. I was also reading Minnesota was the center of whiskey in the U.S. Isn't that correct? Well, so, we, we so, so, it was, uh, and then prohibition did for it once upon a time. It's a... Uh, I've obviously been doing too much homework. <laughs> well, that, there must have been a huge tradition there. No? There is, like, in, in terms of distilling in Minnesota, there's a number of, of different distilleries set up, all with their own different niches and all different ideas. And one of the things that we have kind of set as a vision for ourselves is to actually put Minnesota back on the world whiskey map as well. And, you know, you don't do that on your own. You do that in partnership with other distilleries around the area. And we're actually, we've got good relationships with our, with, with our friends and partners in the other distilleries. And what I love about this business is that this business has a great ability for us to build relationships. You compete at the shelf, but once you step back from the shelf, the relationships that you build in this business are fantastic and, and long-standing as well. Patrick, hard question for you. When you were on the phone first time to Brian, he said something like, we nearly needed to have cue cards. Did you understand a word <laughs> of what he was saying? <laughs> he still needs them. <laughs> Thankfully, the accent wasn't too tough to decipher. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself. You're rattling off, Brian, the, uh, st the st all the states in the U.S. that you uh, are now so familiar with, but with the thickest cards. Oh, I believe, yeah, yeah. And I don't <laughs> think I'll ever lose it, and I hope I don't either. <laughs> I think it's but gotten the, heavier since we came back to Ireland. <laughs> he's he's probably, showing off probably. a little 
son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anybody in your distillery knows what it, know uh, what he's talking about? <laughs> As I say, I do walk around with cue cards. Yeah? <laughs> if they don't, they're doing a good job intuiting it. <laughs> how much? This is a broad question. How much is the whiskey business in general, not just yours, a marketing exercise nowadays? Uh, that it's you just have to find that niche and. I think there, there's there's definitely a big element of it. I think one of one of what we're seeing a lot is people don't just talk about whiskey now for the liquid inside the bottle. They want to know the story. They want to know the authenticity behind it. They want total honesty and transparency about what you're doing, whether you're distilling it yourself, whether you're blending it, whether you're you're, you're just. Um, uh, contract bringing in distillate and, and, and doing that. So I think for, for us, what we find is that as long as you're open and honest and transparent and you do have, obviously when they taste it, it needs to taste good as well. I think you're seeing a lot more interest from people in your story and they want to know more. They want to get behind the people. They want to get behind the brand. And obviously marketing plays a big role in that. Social media, marketing through social media gives a bigger, bigger reach. But one of the things that we find is 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 one of the st- strongest ways of getting people to like our whiskey is to actually do a sampling and taste it and come in because it is different. So where will be the next types of blends of whiskey, do you think? Like you, what you're, as I understand it, what you're doing at the moment is experimenting. Yeah, it's it's in it's it's innovation. I mean, the way we look at it is that if you look at the three whiskies that we're actually producing at the distillery at, at this moment in time, they'll actually be standalone whiskies. So they will be a triple pot still rye, a triple pot still bourbon, and an American single pot still. And what about blends, duo blends, if I can call them that? Can you put a bit of bourbon into a whiskey or? Yeah. So ultimately, you know what you see there is that that's that blend of Irish pot still, Irish grain, and American rye. We also have the Irish pot still, Irish grain and bourbon and you know those those whiskies people are kind of beginning to look and kind of that, is it a gimmick first of all is it a gimmick when they That's taste really what it, I wanted to ask yeah. no but I, I, I totally understand it because you know when you do start to release something like this the first question people do ask is this is just a marketing gimmick there's no you know is it going to be any different the actual answer is in the tasting and people do see that extra dimension of flavour, that extra dimension of complexity that they wouldn't get in 100% Irish or 100% American. So it does actually work. And you both are familiar with the Dr. John Teeling story and that he eventually sold out. So I presume (laughs) at some stage, and particularly Patrick with wearing your VC hat, this is primed for flipping, not now, but maybe in 10 years' time. Well, I think you, you know, uh, one, I got to go back to John Teeling. John Teeling was the first person I ever met within the Irish whiskey community. My car broke down. So John actually had to give me a ride. Uh, Pure so, entertainment, so. <laughs> isn't he? He's just, oh, just, just witty. He's a total character. But can right? I just I qualify it. something? <laughs> Patrick just said there his car broke down. He broke his car. Uh, <laughs> he was trying to drive with a ski with, oh. with, with in gear stick. I'm used to an automatic, of, yeah, obviously, so. from the states. So uh, my car broke down is a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, so you know, I know John Teeling. Uh, really appreciate all the support he's been giving us uh, from Great Northern. Um, yeah, look, I mean, you know, the whiskey space is is uh, you know ultimately there are you know exit opportunities and um, some of those opportunities can be quite, quite large and, and have, have potential appeal. But, you know, this is year one for us or just, just embarking almost towards year two now. So we're, we're happy to just kind of be doing our thing as a startup, build the business, grow the business, kind of take that on our own shoulders. And then, you know, we'll see where, you know, seven, 10 years down the road, what might happen. What you don't know is I was a stockbroker once. I know these guys. They haven't got that vision of five or six or seven years, two years, right off or they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know venture capital is better than I do. That's you what see. I'm telling you. I'm only, I'm only a poor innocent Irish guy, you know. I can, tell, guy, I can you know. tell you one thing. In our, in our, in our venture portfolio uh, as a family, I think we've probably invested, you know, in the venture funds, you know, over 50 companies. And the average lifespan of a venture investment is seven to 10 years and nothing happens overnight. You just build a business, keep your head down and, you know, hopefully the world will find you one day. 
Two final questions. I always have final, final questions because then I go off on a little tangent. I think that's priced at about 45 euro a bottle, am I right? It's Or actually 50 euro, I'm sure. Okay. The Irish And what's the Irish thinking Irish about that? I mean, you could have gone 40, you could have gone 60. Or in, as I see with Green Spot, which you're directly involved in, is that up at a hundred quid or something now? Depends. And, and the finishes might be up at a hundred quid. I don't think the, the regular no. Green Spot would be. I think for us, one of the things is we wanted to make the whiskey accessible from a versatility point of view as well. And when you're using it in cocktails, you want to make sure that from a pricing You've point of view... You've just proven my point. Cocktails, what's the point? Not <laughs> like, all. You've This just spent the, all your brilliance yeah? producing that and then you chuck in... No, you see, this is where brands nowadays have to be actually able to perform because from a versatility point of view, you need to be able to be a whiskey and still be the hero in a cocktail. You're right, some cocktails and some whiskies get lost in the cocktail. What we've shown with Keep Us Art Irish Plus American and Irish Plus Bourbon is the I love right the way cocktail. you get the, the name in all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're well trained. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not feel like St. Jemison or something yeah. like that? <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Um, What we what we try to showcase is that, you know, when you have a whiskey that has the best of, you know, the richness of an Irish pot still and the spiciness, spiciness of a rye, put it in a cocktail like an old fashioned and still see those flavors mingle well with the syrups and the bitters. So it does work. I'd say your family were storytellers back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to you. Well, My final, final question, because we have to wrap it up, is who would both of you separately, Patrick, to start with, hire in a heartbeat? All right, well, my first one's going to have to be Brian's son, Brian Nation. <laughs> the amount of excitement, interest, and passion <laughs> that Brian, he wants to follow in his father's footsteps. Of what is age is as, He's eight. He's eight. He wants to follow in his father. He, he's got big ambitions for an eight-year-old. He wants to follow in his father's footsteps as master distiller, but he has a, a brain that was built for marketing. And like, we'll be walking around towns on vacation or in Minnesota. Be like, hey, I have a good idea, Dad, Brian. Oh, yeah. Or, or, <laughs> well, uh, there's a phrase here that you may not have heard is that he didn't lick it off the street. In other words, he got it from the dad. <laughs> Um, Brian, who I, would... I'm actually going to be from a... It's actually going to be a little bit of an emotional one, and that is I would hire my dad. Unfortunately, I lost my dad in January this year, oh, but he you. taught me integrity, honesty, ambition, passion, and a willingness to work. So if he was around, I'd hire him in the morning. And his name? Was Michael Nation. Michael. Okay, well, uh, our condolences on that, because that's very... Uh, very... Recent. Yes, uh, it, it, yeah. it was hard, to be honest. But, you yeah. know, I mean, it's like the, be the the thing about living in America now is that it's not that far away. So I can still get home regularly to see my mom. I know that we've launched in Ireland, she'll be sick of seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of you are very, very welcome back in to that great business show. And thank you, Patrick O'Shaughnessy. And again, congratulations to your great, 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 great granddaddy <laughs> for, for giving us a national part. <laughs> um, um, Dude, honest, I'm more impressed with that than the music. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Brian, Brian Nation, a hero, to, in particular to Peter Rice, the boss here. He just thinks that you, he couldn't wait to meet with you, actually. So there you go. Thank you both for Thank joining us on well. that uh, great cheers, business show. Thanks for having us. Want to increase sales, reduce overheads, and provide customers with a better service? Then use Big Red Web, the easiest way to develop and maintain your website. It gives you powerful business reporting, digital marketing, and automatically integrates with the award-winning Big Red Cloud Accounting software. It's a game changer for SME businesses. It's so good, the government gives you a €2,500 grant towards it. Big Red Web, e-commerce made simple. BigRedCloud.com forward slash web. De facto shaving oil, made only from natural oils. Nothing nasty on your skin. This interview was posted on episode 133 of That Great Business Show. Essential listening for anyone with a nose for whiskey. For more great business insights, do listen back to our entire back catalogue of That Great Business Show on Spotify or